Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am sharing the second video of my health hack series. The first one went down so well. So many of you contacted me telling me how helpful those hacks were, which makes me so happy and is exactly why I'm doing this, to help you guys and give useful information out to help along your health journey. If you haven't seen the first video, then make sure you go check that out after you finish watching this one, of course. But before I get started, guys, please remember to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell so that you get a notification in when I upload a new video. I do it on a weekly basis and you for sure don't want to miss any health hacks. I'm not going to keep you guys waiting any longer. Let's get on with the first hack. So the first hack is batch making your green juice. Now a green juice is a staple to have in a healthy diet. I always say how important it is to have your green juice first thing in the morning, but I know some of us can get busy, I do. You don't always wanna blend and make it up every single morning, so batch making it is the secret. And I'm just gonna take you through doing exactly what I do every three days because this batch lasts three days for two people. So if it was one person, it would be six days. I wouldn't recommend it for one person because by the fourth day, you'll start to lose a lot of the nutrients. Um, you can freeze it, so you could blend half if you're by yourself, put half in the fridge and then put half in the freezer. So I do have this recipe on my website. I will link it below, but I'll go through it with you now. I filled the jug three quarters of the way up with spring water and then I add in my ingredients. So, I always put a banana in. You can put in an apple um, and a pear as well if you like to, but ideally you want as little fruit in there as possible. But I'll always have a banana. Then lemon juice. Then we have some spinach. Some parsley because it's in season, some celery, some romaine lettuce, and this beautiful piece of cavolo. How pretty is that? Fan myself with it. Um, this is from this is organic, and that's probably why it's so big. So all the ingredients are in the blender, and then I just turn it on. When it's done, I just grab a large jug. This is the one we use, we got it from Ikea. I'll link everything below for you. It's got a cork lid. And simply pour all of it into the jug. That's how much we usually have left over from the jug, but that's enough for two people. So we'll drink that immediately. And then that will be two days for both of us for four days for one person waiting in the fridge. It saves you so much time. Next up is a really recent one we've been doing. This is the second batch we've made. It's basically drying out papaya seeds and using them as pepper. Um, really, really easy to do. You basically get your fresh papaya and when you cut it in half, grab a spoon and scoop out all of the seeds from the middle, give them a nice wash, and then place them onto a plate or a tissue. We actually left ours in here. And then just leave them to dry. If it's a sunny day, you can put them out in the sun and they'll dry a little bit faster. We leave ours on the windowsill. Um, it roughly took, I would say, nearly two weeks, just under a week and a half to dry these out, but we wanted them really, really dry because you can get away with them not being as dry, but we really wanted to put it into a pepper mill and use them like that rather than pestle and mortar them. So it's a really good way of using the papaya seeds. We used to try and eat them or put them in smoothies, but they are very bitter and they are hard to eat in that way. So it's a really nice way of using the papaya seeds. I hate throwing anything away, especially when a food has so many nutritional benefits as papaya seeds do. Um, so it's a really nice way of doing it. And like I said, you can pop them in a pepper mill and then just sprinkle a little bit on all of your food and you're getting all of the lovely benefits of papaya seeds. 
batch making fajita mixes is something I've been doing for a long time because I used to buy the packeted stuff in the shop and I didn't realize that there was so much rubbish in them. Um, and you don't expect spices to have all these other things in them other than the actual spices themselves. So not only is it healthier, but it's actually, I personally think, tastier to make your own. And it's so easy. It's just a combination of all the spices that you probably already have lying around in your cupboard and putting it into one jar. I'm waiting for my label maker because I want to label all of my jars. I'm getting very um, organized in the kitchen. I'll actually be doing a video of how I'm making my kitchen sustainable. I'll use a jar like this and literally fill it up with all the spices and my little recipe and store it. And it's always there to hand whenever I'm making a fajita mix. This is something I do with a lot of things. So as the health series goes on, you'll see more and more of these little jugs coming out with recipes and mixes in them that are really good to grab and literally go. So you start by grabbing a jar to store the spices in. And then I've got my measurers out as well. And all I do is pop in a big batch of my recipe. So I'll double it up, triple it up until it's full. And it's really simple. Here I've got some paprika. So I'll put a teaspoon of that in. Next, some garlic powder. I love me some garlic, so I will put two teaspoons of the garlic powder. Then cumin seeds. Again, two teaspoons of cumin seeds. Chili, of course, so depending on how much spice you like. So I'm gonna go with one just because this chili mix is from Italy and it was the one my grandmother did. I've had it for a long time um, and it's very hot. So what I'll do is I'll put the one in and if I feel that it needs more chili when I'm cooking it, I'll just add it straight to the pan rather than overdoing it in the pot. Then I put in a teaspoon of turmeric, two teaspoons of salt, Again, if you need to add more ones to your cooking, then you can. Next, some coconut sugar. I will put about two tablespoons of coconut sugar. And then about two tablespoons of black pepper, which I've grinded into the lid because it will just go everywhere. I do normally just do this in a bowl and then pour it all in. I don't know why I've done it this way this time. Two tablespoons of paprika. So that's pretty full. The mixture's about here, so three quarters of the way, um, which I think is enough because you need space to shake it. So you pop your lid on and give it a good shake to combine all of those spices together. And that's it. it smells amazing. And if you have a label maker or you can hand write your label, just pop your fajita mix label there so you know what it is. And then every time you're making Mexican or cooking fajitas, you can skip this part. It makes things so much quicker. Making your own nut milk is not only gonna save you money, but it's actually better because a lot of nut milks out there, again, they put in preservatives or sweeteners or any other things that don't need to be there. They're just not necessary. And making it yourself is so easy and it's two ingredients. And like I said, it's gonna save you so much money. We must make our own nut milk three or four times a week. We obviously use a lot because we're plant-based. Um, and again, it's the base of a lot of things. It's our milk, it goes into our cooking. Um, and we love it. And like I mentioned, it's so easy to do. I'm gonna show you now. So our milk of choice is almond. I've already filled the jug with spring water. You can fill it as much as you want because all you need to do after that is take your almonds and take a big handful and another. And that is it. 
that's all you need. You can add a little bit of salt if you want to. I know some people do. You could add some vanilla. You could mix it all up. But I'm just showing you a basic almond milk. And then all you do is blend it. And as you can see, it looks like milk. That's it. So there is another step you can do, and this is up to you. I personally don't do it because I don't mind all the pieces. I like to have every component of the almond in my milk, but you can get a nut bag and you would pour the mixture into this over a bowl and squeeze it out. So you'd have the almond pulp left over, which you can then use in vegan or raw desserts. Um, it can be used, you have to throw it away and then you have the milk left over. But like I mentioned, I personally don't. I literally blend it, take my glass jar. This is similar to the one I showed you for the green juice. I got this one from Ikea with the cork lid. And I just pour the milk in. And then I can grab it anytime I need it and avoid making it all the time or buying it. And then I just pop that in the fridge. The last hack is batch making your chai tea for your chai lattes. I've actually done a lot of batch making today, but it really is so important when you have a plant-based or vegan or healthy lifestyle because these things can be expensive and they can be easily made at home. And also you wanna know exactly what's going into everything that you put into your body. And you can only really trust yourself when it comes to that. I love a chai latte. I have it several times a day. And the last thing I wanna be doing is boiling it every few hours to get my mug of chai latte. So basically what we do is we take another one of these glass containers. We always use fresh chai. This one is one we got from, oh, I actually got it from India. <sighs> Smells amazing. And then I will fill this compartment up with the loose tea. I mean, you can do it with chai tea bags if that's all you've got. You want to boil the water, pour it in, and you want to let this sit and let the tea release all of the flavors. So we basically will leave that for five minutes. Also, if you have a bigger teapot, then that's helpful. We broke our one, so we're dealing with this small one, but we will have to refill this several times. But once it's cooled, we will start to fill our glass container with the tea. And we'll just keep on doing that until it's full. And that way, every time I go to have my chai tea, I have my chai and I have my almond milk just sitting in the fridge waiting for me. These will store in the fridge for four to five days, no problem. I'm not gonna lie, I've had it past those days and it's been absolutely fine. It's entirely up to you. I also find that when you do batch make like this, you are more inclined to drink it more often and have it as part of your diet more often. So it's a win-win really. You can do this with any tea you like really. Chai is our choice, we have it every day, but you really can do it with any tea. And then when we want to make the latte, we will just pour some of this into a pan, heat it up and add in some plant-based milk and then some sugar vida to sweeten it up. And that's it for my health hacks for today's video. Like I mentioned earlier, if you missed the first health hacks video, be sure to head over there and check that out after this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you thought, comment below. I'd also love to know your health hacks. What do you do that makes your health journey easier, quicker, cheaper? Please share them and I will obviously reshare them with the rest of the community because it's all about helping each other, inspiring each other. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. And also, if you'd like to keep up with me on a day-to-day -day basis, 
head over to my Instagram at Honesty Alessandra, where of course I'm doing everything healthy, plant-based, vegan, all of that. In the meantime, guys, look after yourselves, stay safe, and of course, stay healthy.